Hi guys! Welcome sa ating ginagawang discussion dito sa ating series of lecture about statics of rigid bodies. In today's discussion, we shall be having sample problem about equilibrium of non-concurrent force system. And the problem goes like this. There is a 12-foot bar of negligible weight that rests on a smooth inclines and subjected to loads as shown in the figure. In this case, we are required to find the angle theta at which the bar will be in equilibrium. So before we solve the problem, let us try to analyze first the problem. As indicated in the problem, this bar having a total length of 12 feet rest on an inclined plane which are considered smooth. The inclination of the planes are indicated so that on the left it is inclined at two vertical and one horizontal while the plane on the right is inclined at an angle equal to 45 degrees. The bar is of negligible weight and, are, and is subjected to two forces. One is vertical at a point 4 feet from B, measured along the bar. The other one is a horizontal force okay, acting at 4 feet also, but this is measured from A, also measured along the bar. And we are required here to find okay, at what angle that this bar will be resting so that the bar will be in equilibrium. Again, let us go back to the basic concept that we will be needing in solving this problem. First, we need to understand how are we going to draw okay, the free body diagram of the bar. How are we going to apply the conditions of equilibrium such, uh, such that the summation of forces along x and y equal to zero, as well as the summation of moments about any axis equal to zero. And so let's start it by drawing our free body diagram. So in this isolated view of the object, we indicate Okay, the different forces acting. So, in the problem, there is a point here which is measured 4 feet from this end. And from this point, there, there is a force acting having a magnitude of 600 pounds. From this point, also measured at 4, okay, from the previously identified point, or 4 feet from the bottom, is another force acting horizontally. And the magnitude of the force is 300 pounds. At point A, there is a plane inclined at 45 degrees. And so we shall expect that the force exerted by the plane shall be perpendicular to the plane. And therefore, it will be also acting 45 degrees with respect to the horizontal. Whereas at this point B, okay, the plane is inclined at two vertical Okay, so one horizontal, two vertical. And therefore, we shall be expecting that the force exerted by the plane will be perpendicular to the plane and that there will be an R sub B, okay, inclined at one vertical, two horizontal. So, after which we have to consider the perpendicular distance or the inclined value of this inclination, which is at the square root of 5, coming from or using the Pythagorean theorem. So from here, we can now solve for okay, the angle. Okay, this is the angle that we shall be looking. Okay, the angle theta at which the bar will be resting okay, in equilibrium with the plane. So how are we going to work on the problem? Let's start with okay, working on resolving the force into its horizontal and vertical components. And let's start with the reaction at A, given as R sub A. We are going to imagine and observe R sub A is inclined at 45 degrees. And we know that 45 degrees is a special angle. Special in the sense that the sign of that angle is equal to the cosine of that angle as indicated in this uh, a node and therefore we shall expect that for an angle 
of 45 degrees, we say that the vertical component A of that force shall be equal to the horizontal component. And this shall be equal to R sub A cosine of 45 or R sub A sine of 45. So after which we can now replace this R sub A by the horizontal component and that is equal that, that they are equal r sub a h is equal to r sub a v or r sub a v is equal to r sub a h now after solving r sub a into component we do the same for r sub b and because r sub b is inclined using k duration proportion therefore r sub b can be resolved into components using the ratio and proportion so that okay using ratio and proportion the vertical component of b representing this one is proportional to one as the horizontal component of the, uh, the reaction at b is to two as the r sub b the reaction itself is to the inclined distance which is the square root of five and so from this relationship we can solve for r sub bv which is equal to r sub b over the square root of 5 and r sub b h is equal to 2 r sub b over the square root of 5. So, so that after okay, computing for r sub b v and r sub b h, we can now replace this r sub b by, the, by its respective okay, component so that okay, the component can be expressed as okay, the horizontal, sorry, the horizontal be 2 over the square root of 5 r sub b whereas the vertical will be r sub b over the square root of 5. And afterwards, you will notice that, okay, this uh, okay, plane or this bar is now subjected to different forces that are resolved into horizontal and vertical components. After which, we can apply the conditions of equilibrium. That is, by summing a force horizontal, okay, we're going to sum up force horizontally equal to zero. And what are those forces that are acting horizontally? You will notice that this is, okay, these are the following. So you have this force, this force, and that force. So that if we shall be using a convention, okay, force that is directed to the right is positive. Therefore, summing up all these three shaded forces, okay, using this convention, therefore we shall have, okay, two, over R sub B, two times R sub B over the square root of five being positive, plus this one plus 300 and this is negative because that is okay, directed in the opposite direction minus r sub h equal to zero and we shall be calling it as our equation one now applying the second condition of equilibrium that summation of force vertical equal to zero let us identify the different forces that are acting vertically these are the following we have this one this one and this one now if we will be using this convention as positive Therefore, how are we going to add all the vertical forces? I will have, therefore, R sub B over the square root of 5 multi, uh, minus this 600. Okay, and this will be positive R sub A sub B. And all of this must be equal to 0. And let us define that this is our second equation. Okay, instead of expressing them, solving for R sub A, H, and R sub B, we simply add the two equations anyway r sub a h and r sub a v are the same therefore they can be eliminated when we add equations one and two and therefore how are we going to okay, add equation we simply add the two the result of this when added i will have two rb over the square root of five a plus rb over the square root of five and that becomes three rb over the square root of five while this two when added will be equal to negative 300 and this two when added will just cancel because r sub a h and r sub a v are equal and therefore the equation is just equal to zero now simplifying this equation simplifying this equation you will notice that three and 300 will cancel each other so cancel by the way and we shall have here a value k for r sub b that this will be equal to 100 multiplied by the square root of 5. So instead of taking the square root of 5, I would rather simply write it this way because later on the square root of 5 will be cancelled.
So how are we going to do it? Now, if we're going to solve for R sub BV, the vertical component of okay, R sub B, by looking at this relationship, that R sub B, okay? Therefore, we sub substitute the value of R sub B, and that gives us the value of RBV equal to 100 multiplied by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5, and you will notice that square root of 5 will just cancel each other, and what we have is R sub B V equal to 100. Now, doing the same for R sub B H, looking at the simulation for R sub B H, which is equal to 2 R sub B over the square root of 5, then substituting the value here, okay, so we have R sub B H equal to 2 times 100, the square root of 5 over the square root of 5, this it also cancel each other, then we have R sub B H now equal to 200. So after that, we can now uh, okay, substitute the values of the component to their uh, okay, reactions ano, by substituting okay, and then apply the summation of moment. So if we will be applying the summation of moment, it will be good to consider by using one direction as positive. We will be using okay, counterclockwise as positive. Therefore, we try to sum up. But before we do it, we try to substitute Okay, the values of the component, particularly the value of R sub V and R sub H in this K okay, direction. So let us try to do it. So let us now try to substitute the value. <clears throat> so that when we sum up now moments about A equal to zero, and considering counterclockwise as passive, how are we going to do it? It would be good to know first their respective moment arms from A. So what are those moment arm? What will be the moment arm of this 600 pound that is directed downward? That would be equal to A cosine of theta. This distance kasi is A. And that angle is theta, therefore that is A cosine of theta. While the perpendicular distance of this 100 from A will be defined by this distance. And that is equal to 12 cosine of theta. Similarly, we can compute also for the moment arm of the horizontal forces. This 300 will have this moment arm. And how much will be this distance? That will be equal to 4 sine of theta. While this distance, which is the moment arm of the 200 pound force, will be equal to 12 sine of theta. Now, so that we're going to sum up now the moment arm. Let's start it. Let's do it one by one. What will be the moment of 200 whose moment term is 12 si times sine of theta, theta and his direction is counter sorry clockwise with respect to a so this will be negative in sense so that this will be when multiply the two will have a negative a okay, 200 times sine of theta whereas this force the force that is 300 has a moment arm of 4 multiplied by sine of theta. So that if the 2 shall be multiplied, it will be producing a negative moment because they will be producing a clockwise moment about A. It will be rotating about A in this direction. And so this will be, when multiplied, shall be negative 300 multiplied by 4 sine of theta. Then this force 100, which is upward, will also be producing a clockwise moment about A and whose moment arm is 12 times cosine of theta. Therefore, when the two are multiplied, it will be equal to negative times 100, 12 cosine of theta. And the last force, which is this one, which is directed downward and having a magnitude of 8 cosine theta when multiplied will be positive. And all of them, when, when added, must be equal to zero. Now let us do it, let us try to simplify one by one. This magnitude will, when simplified will be equal to 2000, negative 2400 sine of theta. Whereas one, when multiplied, will be negative 1200 sine of theta. This, when multiplied, will be negative 1200 cosine of theta. All this one will be okay, 4800 cosine of theta. That must be equal to zero. Now combining similar terms and then rearranging, we shall have here, okay, negative, I'm sorry, 3600 cosine of theta shall be equal to 3600 sine of theta and that 3600 will cancel each other. If I will be dividing, dividing both sides by cosine of theta, then it will reduce to an equation tangent theta equals 1 and we know that 
Okay, an angle whose tangent is equal to 1 is an angle equal to 45 degrees. And so that is the angle that this bar would be making so that the bar will remain in equilibrium when subjected to a force of 600 downward at this point and 300 force downward at that point. So that is how we solve the problem okay, about conditions of equilibrium of non-concurrent force system. And I hope that you are able to follow the discussion using the concept and the procedure that I have presented. I hope guys that you will be okay, always following and okay, joining me in our future discussion about this topic and, all other, and some topics to come by subscribing to this channel and okay, sharing it to your friends so that your friends would also be notified and informed of these discussions. Again, thank you very much for watching.